Hello adventurers and welcome back to my channel. Today we're coming back with the Road Pro. I'm checking out the Road Pro crock pot and trying out a variety of different recipes to see how efficient that it is and also to get some ideas on cook times while sharing some of my favorite recipes. So today, today we're going to be making something sweet. Now I'm really excited about this one because this is one of my favorite go-to recipes. I like to make this whenever I'm in a sticks and bricks like I am right now, but I also want to be able to adapt it to make it on the road. And I think that the crock pot would be a great solution for this. So I can just like throw it in, go have some adventures, come back and have a sweet treat. Now, with that said, there's going to be a few things along the way that uh, we may experience. We may experience longer cook times. We may experience more power pulled away. I don't know. That's why we're doing all these tests while we're here before we hit the road. So with that said, let's make a dump cake. For today's recipe, we're going to be making a dump cake, and you only need three items for that. You need a cake mix, some form of fruit in heavy syrup, and then also some butter. Now, typically, I would use two large cans of this in a casserole dish, and since I'm only making a small amount, I picked up one small can. This, I would normally use one whole box, so we're going to use half a box, and I would normally use a whole stick of butter, so today we're going to use half a stick of butter. But I'm going to get this all ready to go, and then we're making a dump cake. Head and plugged it in, and I'm going to turn it on so that we can get this thing heating up because it does run much cooler than my other crock pot. So I want to get it kind of heated while I'm getting this stuff actually in there. That'll speed it up a little bit on the process. So right now it's pulling about 96 watts. I've already got it turned on. And so I'm just going to leave the lid on until I'm ready. I'm going to go ahead and open the can, cut the butter, and um, portion out our cake mix, and then we'll put it all inside. I have made this in the crock pot before, but I've also made it in the oven before, and I love a good dump cake. It's kind of like a cobblery yumminess, and um, it's perfect, especially if you uh, happen to be going down the road and want something sweet whenever you get there. So I thought this could be super fun, and then if it's a super hot day, I was kind of thinking, like, if I was driving down the road making some peach cobbler, I could just stop off at, like, a truck stop and get a small thing of ice cream to go with it, and that would be so good. So um, today we're just gonna worry about this though. We're gonna see how long it takes to make it, and uh, if this is a logical thing that we could make on the road using the Road Pro. So here we go. We're gonna use the heavy syrup. You need to make sure that you keep all of the syrup in there. This will just make it way better. And um, I know your instinct is probably drain it. Don't drain it, just keep it rocking. And so, inside we're about to go. Now I picked out the chunked peaches, but you can do apricot, you can do pineapple, you can do cherry, you can do apple pie filling if you want to. Any of those will work, but whatever you do, you need to have moisture with it, which is why the heavy syrup is important because that's what's going to make this into a delicious crust of happiness. So normally I would use an oven bag. I do think I want to do that today because it's going to get real real messy real fast. Give me a minute. I picked these up at Walmart. These are actually large enough for my big one. I probably could find some smaller ones, but for the time being, we're just going to retrofit this into the small. That way we don't end up having to scrub and clean quite as much. Although this does come out, so it does make it a little bit easier. It's always nice just to kind of have an extra layer there. And one of the things I really like about these also is you can close them at the top and it's going to keep more of your moisture in when you're cooking your meats. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this set up for us and then um, we'll dump our peaches inside. Okay, just kind of retrofitting this, tapping it at the bottom, pushing it out to the edges, pulling it over the top and making sure that it's down in there good. That looks good. Again, I need some smaller ones of these, but definitely recommend these, especially if you're on the road, because then it's going to give you a little bit extra protection just in case you hit a weird bump or something like that and things shift. So now it's time into the bottom we go. Wow. Okay. I'm going to have to spread those out just a little bit. We're playing it by ear here. Okay. Spreading these out just a little to make sure that they fill the entirety of the bottom. Realistically, this may be a thicker base, but it's okay. I really like peaches, so this should work out well. 
Now we're gonna go in with the cake mix and we may not even need half. We may need about a quarter for this amount of space. So what I'm gonna do is just cut off the corner here and then we'll pour directly from here. Our goal is just to coat the top but not be too thick. So I'm just gonna sprinkle this around and stop there. Okay, spreading it around, just kind of pushing it down as I spread it so it can really start to absorb some of those juices. Oh yeah, this is gonna be a perfect amount. This was just under half, so this is gonna be really, really good. And I know it looks crazy, but this is about to take on a delicious golden topped crust when we add the butter. So with that, Let's cut some butter. Okay, and for this, I'm just gonna cut it right in half, maybe. There we go. And take this side and put it to the side. Then I'm gonna unwrap this part, but leave it on the paper just so it will make some mess, less mess. And then I'm gonna chop it into little pieces. Your goal is to have tiny pieces that look like this. And then we're going to just sprinkle those on the top of the dump cake. And then if we need to, we can always add more butter as it goes, if it needs a little bit more moisture. But I think half is going to be enough. We'll see though. Looking like this, and then I'm just gonna grab them because it's just me here eating. If you were feeding somebody else, you would wanna grab them with a utensil of some kind. But um, yeah, here we go. We're just gonna put it on the top and just kind of line them up just so that they're coating the entirety of the top. And then we're going to cover it and let it cook. Time being on this, I'm just gonna leave the bag part out because I don't wanna trap a bunch of moisture in there, but um, I just kind of pulled it up a little bit so I could make sure that the rim pushes down really nicely. As you can see, we're pulling 95 watts right now and uh, we're using the Pecron for this. So we wait. This is the hard part because it's gonna start smelling oh so good in just a little bit. And I'm gonna be like, grumble, grumble, hungry, hungry. And I can't eat it yet. Now, the thing is with this, whenever you're cooking this, you want it to cook, but you don't want it to like be stirred, really. We're going to push the crust down slowly as it cooks. So as the butter starts to like get nice and melty on the top, we're just gonna kind of push on that so it can make sure that all of that cake mix gets coated in the butter or the juice. And so that's gonna take a little bit, but we're just gonna leave it alone and um, fight the temptation to come back over here. I'm gonna set this for about an hour to kind of see where we're at in an hour because realistically, again, a crock pot is slow moving. Now, if I was to put this in the other Road Pro that I have, the stove, it would cook much faster, but I wanna see how long it's gonna take and if this is achievable in the crock pot itself. So now we're off to uh, do other things and forget about it for a little bit, but I am gonna set a timer. So. Whenever I hear the timer go off, we'll come check it. The timer has the countdown going. Guys, I don't know what has happened. I came over into the kitchen and I looked over and clearly still plugged in, not drawing any watts. Barely warm to the touch. Very much so on, because that's off, on, nothing changes. Okay. okay, I took the little thing off thinking maybe if I stretch the cord out, that'll fix it. Um, I don't know, this is gonna take a minute. Definitely still not working. I'm gonna turn the DC off and then turn the DC back on to see if it's a power station issue. Nope, not a power station issue. Okay, maybe I'll take this out and plug it in sideways. Nope. Hmm. This is sad. I don't know what's going on and I don't like it. And this is not great. I've had such good luck with my Road Pro. And so I would like to think that this one is just like maybe a one off. I don't know. The first thing I cooked, it had no issue whatsoever with, of course, because we saw that. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to do here. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue trying to troubleshoot this, see if there's something that I've done on my end that is wrong. This is why I do these videos, guys, so you guys can see exactly what I experience, how it works, and then what the possibilities are. Um, again, never had an issue with Road Pro. 
So I'm thinking this might just be a fluke. Hmm, back to the drawing board we go, but I'm gonna try to troubleshoot and then we'll do a follow-up. I'm now super confused. I went through and I checked the cord to make sure the cord was not crimped. It didn't have any issues. I checked the actual place it goes into the cooker. It's fine. Um, it doesn't look like there's any like weirdness going on. I checked the Pecron itself to make sure the Pecron was working. It is. I even brought in the Jackery over here to see if maybe it was just not for some reason like working with the Pecron and um, Still not working over here either. So I believe that this thing went, <sighs> that's disappointing. It shows it's only pulling one watt, which if I were to unplug this, it would still show it's pulling one watt because that's just the DC being on. So I don't know if this little connector here kind of got messed up and there's a fuse. So maybe I'll check the fuse. According to this, I can untwist the brass nose cone, which is this and pull out this part. And this is the fuse somewhere in here. There's the fuse, okay. Nope, the fuse, the fuse, I don't know if you guys can see this very well, but the fuse is not blown. I'm gonna try to see if this might have been loose and it wasn't engaging, and then see if that'll work. Okay, back into the 12 volt we go. You know, things happen sometimes. Still nothing. In we go. And let's see. Sometimes it takes it a second. So we're gonna have patience. We're gonna take a little breath. We're gonna take a little breathy poo. No, no, it's, it's not working. Man, that's disappointing. And the crazy thing about it is, it's still lighting up here showing that it should be delivering power. So what this leads me to believe is that there is an issue somewhere after this point, maybe. Guys, I went ahead and just pulled the piece out. I looked again at the cord and it doesn't look crazy. I also called my dad because my dad is on site. He's gonna come down here and we're gonna see if we can't figure out what's going on because like it warmed up for like a couple minutes and then it just like stopped. So this is cold to the touch now because it's been off for a few minutes. Just to kind of give you an idea, we didn't even make it through one hour. This issue happened around the 25 minute mark and I just haven't turned this off yet. So we're gonna turn off our clock and um, I guess we're gonna wait on dad to see if we can't problem solve a little bit. I don't know what happened guys. I've used it once, once to make one meal and it was a long meal, it was a long cook, but at the same time, it shouldn't do that. And nowhere in the manual did it say that you can't cook for an extended amount of time because it'll stop it from working. So I'm thinking that, again, I think I just got a dud, but um, I might have to, again, kind of reach out to the company and say, hey, so I had this issue. <laughs> I hate to do that, but I wanna be honest with you guys and share what's going on. I think it's really important for us to go through all of this. And you know what? If this doesn't work out, I will put it in my other Road Pro because I know for a fact it will cook in there. And that way I can still have my little cobbler. Um, it, it might just look a little bit different because it'll be in a rectangular pan, but it'll cook faster, that's for sure. So um, yeah, we're gonna wait until dad gets down here. I think he's gonna bring a test light. And then um, this is one of the reasons why I always tell you guys, if you have an opportunity to check out your products before you take them on the road, do it because you'll be able to see if you need to send it back, troubleshoot, if there's something that you need to learn through the learning curve, all of those things. So um, yeah, I'll give you guys a follow up in just a few minutes. I went ahead and got this guy out so we could go ahead and get the cobbler cooking because it's gonna be a few minutes and I don't want my stuff to go bad. So I'm gonna pull this out and for those who haven't seen my original video about this guy, definitely go check it out. This thing is so handy. The cord stores up in here, there's a fuse, and then inside, it's like this lunchbox setup where, I need two hands for this, guys. I need two hands. Plenty of room to store your little cooking pans. Now, I know a lot of people don't like aluminum, and that's fine. Um, I have not been able to find a silicone one that fits 
without having an edge that actually hangs over. So I've been using these. I've used aluminum foil my entire life. I don't have a third eyeball. I haven't gotten any kind of craziness. So I understand this is not the desired for everyone. However, this is what they actually recommend that you use in here. So that's why I've been using it. But with that said, I'm gonna pull one of these out and then I'm just gonna transfer the cooking bag over into this and then we'll plug this up and get it started. Still have my cobbler, we want my dump cake. So I'm gonna make sure that I can get it cooked and then we'll troubleshoot this and I'll follow up. I'm really sad, I'm super, super sad because again, I know Road Pro products are really good. I've been using this one for a long time. This one has had zero problems other than whenever I physically dropped it myself on my foot, which ouch don't recommend dropping any kind of products on your foot ever um but by doing that i blew the fuse myself it had nothing to do with the product so um that was an easy replace an auto parts store a plug and play and it was good again learned my lesson don't drop something on your foot like ever it it's not good for you or for it but <laughs> with that said i'm going to go ahead and get this cooking and then as soon as we get a chance to, we'll figure out what's going on with that one and um, see if we can't get it solved. If not, we're gonna have some cobbler just the same. It's gonna look a little bit different because it's messy now. It was set up for the circle and now it's, well, you see, but I'm gonna try to move around the butter just a little bit to kind of get it more even and then I'll put it on the power station. Okay, we have it all taken care of. So I'm just kind of rolling the bag down just a little bit so I can fit it inside. We're gonna close it up and then it blocks into place and then over here I have to pull out the cord which normally I do before I put the food in I don't I don't know what I was thinking today so um, here we go cords out gonna unwind it and then plug it in over here and we are good to go this thing is gonna be rocking and cooking and just to kind of echo that it is not the power station immediately went to work so it is definitely the slow cooker now I need to set a alarm for this one this one cooks a little bit faster, so I'm gonna set it for about 30 minutes and then we'll check on it. Okay, timer, 30 minutes and go. In the meantime, I'm gonna move this jackery kind of out of the way so it's not on the stove and set it over here and then we'll address this in a minute. Ooh, I'm excited now, again, for the second time. You know, I'm definitely excited about the crock pot if it works, but if it's not going to work, I'm very happy that I'm testing it out here at base camp so I don't have that extra piece in my rig. I know this guy works, we're gonna have some deliciousness and I think I'm gonna actually be doing a couple of recipes in this because you've asked me some of the things that I cook along the way, so I'm gonna be sharing some of those kind of as we go. But for now, it's all about trial and error and well, as good as that stew was, that might have been its swan song, I don't know. <laughs> It's just kind of how life goes. And you know, this is actually something that explains how van life works too. Van life is a little weird. Sometimes everything goes smooth sailing. Sometimes it's a hot trash boo-boo mess. But um, today we're not gonna let that get us down. Instead, we're gonna improvise, which is what I suggest you guys do anytime that you have a struggle while you're on the road. The reality is we can't control the outcome of every possible scenario, no matter how much that we plan for worst case scenario stuff to happen. So being able to pivot is imperative if you want to do van life. And so, uh, you know, as much as this is a wonderful, glowing, happy, you know, thing that could have been excellent, it just kind of shows that hiccups really truly do happen with all things, not just the things that you estimate they could happen with. So with that said, we got a timer set, I'm ready for some cobbler, and um, we're gonna walk away, not think about this until dad gets here, and then we'll test this to see if we can figure out what's going on. And if I can't figure it out, I'll reach out to the company and let them know, because um, they seem to be extremely responsive on their social media, so I definitely at least want them to know so that they can kind of follow up to see if this is an ongoing issue as well. It just helps companies to establish if there's a pattern, especially if there's like a number on them, like a serial number, it could be that one whole serial number section is messed up. So uh, always follow up with companies, guys. He said the same thing I did. If there's power to this box, the fuse is good. We checked that, so that's good. So now we're trying to see what exactly is going on. I don't have a lot of high hopes for this, guys. Okay, he said that there's another spot that unscrews. So we're gonna try that and see if it helps again. Just trying everything before we call it quits on this one because I refuse to give up if, if there is something we can fix. Um, at the same time, probably still gonna follow up with the company just to let them know even if we can get it back up, 
because this is, if it's inside this little box, this definitely was how it came. It's weird guys. This is what it looks like on the inside. And we're trying to address if this is burnt or if this is just how it's supposed to look. Yeah. Um, this is interesting. Guys, after taking it apart, um, doesn't look the best. You'll notice that like it was coming into the area from and turning on that light, which means that the connection from the fuse to the inside of the switcher box was good. Otherwise that light wouldn't have turned on. But the issue I think was coming after that. And on this fuse, you can see there's two sets here. Uh, this one right here is where it comes in. Looks fine, looks normal. Then you look at this one, looks a little charred and crunchy there. So um, I'm thinking what happened is it had an issue with the fuse. That's kind of what dad and I were just talking about. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and reach out to Road Pro, let them know, send them the picture so they can see kind of what's going on. Again, because you always want to follow up with a company because if it's a problem that they're having with just one unit that's one thing but if it's a thing that they're seeing a lot of repetition for this will help them track a trend and potentially the actual fuse or circuit itself so i'm gonna do that in the meantime we're still cooking we know this guy right here works and um, it's going and we've got about 19 minutes left on the clock and then we'll check it and then we'll see if it needs to cook a little bit longer. So we're good to go. We're gonna have some food no matter what. Okay, I'm getting power through. Power through, that's the side that it goes out on? Well, you got a ground and a positive. There is power. Getting power here, so it's in here. Ah. Uh, a good chance that we got a problem inside of here. There's nothing we can do about that. It's sort of screwed in. So another test proves that it could be in the pot itself, but that could be causing the grossness also because it could be overloading it, trying to get to it and it can't, so there might be a block. Good times. What I mean by what I just said is that there's charring, which can be caused by surging. Surging happens when something has an issue passing through something, so it still could be to the cord, to the pot. It could be along that line, at the same time, it being charred means that it has a bigger issue with failing. And so even if it can be established that it is the amount that it's putting through the little circuit thing, um, it, it's just a lot, guys. I ever wondered what the inside of one of these looks like? This is interesting. The cord comes up through the bottom and then it attaches to the little thing on the very bottom through a clamp, and then it goes over. Wow. Hey guys, dad found the issue. Um, this could cause a lot of issues actually. So it's not even connected. This thing is not connected at all. The solder came undone. So the soldering came undone. And so it's kind of hard to see that, but if it's not connected, that's why the power would stop. Now, why would this have happened after we'd already used it? It could have gotten that it got too hot for it or snapped it or it wasn't soldered good. Um, so sometimes, sometimes it pays to take things apart and thanks to dad, we were able to figure that out. So this is something that is a little bit of a, a question mark now. This is my conclusion. If this was just an everyday average thing that you were experiencing while going down the road, more than likely you would not be able to fix this because the average person doesn't travel with the soldering gun. The way to fix it is to resolder it. But if it's doing this as a result of the extreme heat on the pan, it could happen again. So that's kind of my thoughts on this one. Um, it does have that charring probably as a result of trying to push that power, even though it didn't have a place to go. But in the heat up cycle of today, that's when this happened and it wasn't even that hot. So that means that the other day, whenever it was cooking for an extended amount of time, cooking that stew, the extended amount of time with that continuous heat is probably realistically what pushed it to this point. And today it was just the breaking point. So now we know that. And again, I'm gonna reach out to Road Pro, let them know all of this. But for the time being, we're just gonna focus on the food at hand, get this video kind of wrapped up, and then let this be a cautionary tale that this stuff can happen. Now, I don't think that this is the average thing that happens with this particular device. I really do not. I've seen tons of amazing reviews from truckers and long haulers who use these all the time, which is what got me so hype about it. And this doesn't mean that I won't try another one of these to see if I have a different experience. In fact, I'll probably pick up another one just to kind of see 
what we can do with it and uh, see if this is the norm because now I'm curious. But I hope that this was helpful to you guys. The stew that I cooked in this was amazing. So I don't want this to have a negative impact on your overall thoughts of the ability of the item. I think I just got a dud guys. Realistically, I think I just got a dud. That is going in and further investigating on this and that is all char coming off. So yeah, there was definitely an issue with this. It's definitely took a turn. Okay, just, just to kind of give you guys an idea as to how bad this thing had gotten, um, even though it wasn't pulling power, I pulled out the little connector and wow, it burned my hand. So yeah, something is definitely wrong with this one. And uh, I'm glad I followed up with them on that because this is not, not typical at all. To give you a comparison, I can literally pull this thing out of the 12 volt and touch it and not have a problem whatsoever. It's not hot. It's not supposed to be hot. So something is definitely awry with that guy. So we're just gonna we're just gonna plug this one back in and let it keep cooking. Uh, but definitely not using that again. Ouch. Whenever I reached out to Road Pro, I told them what had happened. I also sent them pictures, which is the best thing that you can do so they could see what's going on. I also told them, again, I don't know what they want me to do in way of um, if they want me to dispose of it or not. So I'm going to hold on to it until they tell me what to do. Um, just because that makes it where I'm doing what they ask in case they do need the item sent to them for any reason. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of how it works whenever you have to return a product. Every so often this happens. I test a lot of products here on the channel and I've had a few that have had some hiccups along the way and I always try to extend that information back to the company because how are they supposed to make it better if they don't know that there was a situation in the first place? So with that said, um, I think everything's going to be good here. Thank goodness for dad because he has expertise. I do not encourage you to try to reroute any kind of wiring at any given time. If something is an issue, reach out to the company and return it. Do not try to be an electrician yourself. If you don't have any expertise, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> anyway, uh, we have about two minutes left on the other Road Pro though. We're going to look at it, see how much longer that we need to put it in there for. I haven't ever made a dump cake in here, so I'm really excited to see how this turns out, but I am going to go ahead and go in there with my little spatula. And again, we're going to dip into the butter and kind of push it down just a little bit to make sure all of the crust is getting just a little bit of wetness, but not soggy. Does that make sense? Okay, into the lunchbox pail we go. We're going to pull this out and ooh, you can see there's some steam building in here and this is very warm to the touch so we're gonna open it up oh my goodness that is a golden deliciousness going on there so we're going to use our little spatula and make sure that all of this is nice and coated this is not an oven so it's not going to crispy the top quite the same way so i'm going to go ahead and put the timer on for another 20 minutes and we're gonna see what it looks like. It is going to be very tasty and it should be done after this because again, this thing cooks very, very rapidly. Smells so good. Smells so good. Guys, we've gone down to about 96%. We've cooked this for about 40 minutes and um, it started to pull a little bit less because it's super warm inside. Like it gets warm and you can feel it more so on the bottom than the top, but let's open it up. Oh yeah, this is looking nice. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go through my little edges here and kind of push them down again. Again, this is not going to get like a super crispy top to it. So our main goal is just to make sure that the cake part of it is cooked to the consistency that we want it. But this is going to be an easy way to have some cobbler without having to have a full on stove. So. I think this is just about done because whenever I'm poking this in on the side, you'll notice that it's forming like an actual barrier where it's holding together, which means that this is actually cooked. So, oh yeah, this is nice and good. We may be able to eat some dump cake now, guys. I am excited. Okay, I'm gonna get some of this out and since dad helped me, I'm gonna make sure that dad has some also. I may need an actual spoon for this though because of the gooey filling at the bottom. So let's use something I would use in my van, a little ladle, <laughs> um, and that should scoop it out really nicely. Oh yeah, there we go. Ooh, ooh yeah, this is gonna be super, super good. And then I'm just going to make sure he has half and I have half. This is about two servings in this, large servings, but servings nonetheless. And so, 
it's looking pretty tasty and it definitely smells delicious. Now I encourage you guys, if you are trying this recipe without all the added drama and extra having to switch around to use the butter uh, cake recipe because the butter cake just really is fulfilling. It's delightful. It is so yummy. You can use white cake though if you prefer. I just prefer the butter one. It just makes me happy. So we're up to our next serving here. And um, yeah, this is perfect. This is two full servings. So if I was traveling by myself, that would mean that I'd get to eat dessert twice. Um, but traveling with somebody else, I could easily make this for like me plus one friend. And if I wanted smaller servings, I guess technically I could make it stretch to three, but I don't know about you guys. I really like cobbler. So whenever I dig into some cobbler, I want some cobbler. And this would be perfect again with just some truck stop ice cream, or you could stop off at like a Dairy Queen, throw some ice cream on top of it and uh, just let it kind of melt down. And with that, I'm about to serve this up. Everything is contained within this little bag. So all I have to do is roll the bag up and throw it away. And then I could technically use this pan again. Anyone who doesn't like to use aluminum and actually have your food touching it, this is great because the food did not touch the aluminum at all. And so I'm gonna go throw this away and then serve it up. As you can see, using the chunks of peaches was perfect. They're a nice little bite size. You have a little bit of the gooeyness from the crust and the butter in there. Super excited about this. You know, even though it started off being cooked in the crock pot, we ended it off with a different Road Pro product and it turned out pretty nice. This goes to show that if you can pivot on the road, you can make all sorts of interesting things. I encourage you guys to take the recipes that you enjoy or you have enjoyed when previously living in a regular home and adapt them for the road by using a little bit of creative thinking. Um, this is something I normally would have cooked in the oven back here, but I knew I could cook it in some form of travel capacity. So sure enough, it worked out and um, it could work out for you guys too. Three ingredients, a lot of flavor, and uh, well, that's all for this video. Remember guys, we're not here for a long time but we are here for a good time and uh, sometimes that good time has a few hiccups along the way but that's okay because we push through and make it tasty till next time guys bye okay we have a little bit of an update as i wrap up this video um, earlier, whenever I mentioned you should always report things if they go badly so that they can have quality control just in case, whenever I reached out to Road Pro, they immediately responded. And in doing so, they said, hey, this is not normal. Uh, this is not something that we've had an issue with. We'd be very interested in seeing a little bit more of it. And I told them, my dad and I took it apart and they were like, that's fine. We would like to see so that we can make sure this isn't something that's coming off the assembly line and affecting other units. So I'm going to be sending my Road Pro crock pot back to Road Pro and they're going to exchange it for another one. And so that way we can make sure that first and foremost that I have a functioning crock pot, but also so that there's no safety issues for others because that was something they were very concerned about as I would expect they would be. They're a very good company. Again, I've been using my other stove for quite a while and I've loved it. And I know that there are hundreds of thousands of over the road drivers who use these every day. So again, it's just important to follow through with any company and I'm going to get this other one in and then we're gonna do some other tests. I can't wait. I have some other recipes to share with you. But in the meantime, we got to pull out the stove and I always like a good stove moment. So uh, until next time guys, bye.